Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jordi Bailina. I'm the technical lead at uh, Polygon Hermes. And, but today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the motivation of my life, okay? I want to start with what's democracy? Of course, there are a lot of definitions and we could be talking all the, all the afternoon, even in this event is democracy for all, so it is for even an event of that. But here there are two definitions. The left one is probably the most classic one. People has the power, that's the thing. But I like the second one, which is equivalent. It's exactly the same. It, there is a synonym, one of those. But power is exactly the same than responsibility. Okay, so at the end, democracy means uh, responsibility to all the people, or if you want, to all the persons. I like to think about persons because people, for me, is like being a number in a set, and an individual persons is more individual, and it's, uh, we need to understand that democracy, it's a democracy of a community, and the community needs to work for individuals, for, for persons, some hopes. Okay. Um, just okay. Here we go. If we want to organize um, the centralized community from the Greeks, we know how to do it in a, in a small scale. We are here together, and we all want to organize or together. We probably will. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is. We probably will create some boxes with some ballots. We will generate some ballots. We will organize here a voting. Everybody will be watching how the watch voting is valid. We will elect maybe somebody or maybe we'll take some decision, and it will we will count the votes and this more or less will work. And we know the humans how to do this um, from long time ago. But what happened when? we grow, instead of being, I don't know, 20, 30, 80 persons, we are a full city or a full country. Well, this, this means that it does not scale. Uh, we need actually, uh, oh, this is, this is problem. No. We need the central authority. We need to select somebody that organizes the elections and uh, somehow we have to trust in this central authority. I highlighted trusted central authority because if we don't trust the central authority, then the, things doesn't, the thing doesn't work. And you may think, well, but in the, in the current world, we trust central authorities. Well, that's not really true. I, I'm gonna put here two examples. Um, I, I want to put here two examples why is not, this is not true. One is, for example, in Venezuela. Venezuela is, are the elections in Venezuela um, legit? Well, we don't know. But what's clear is that there is a lot of people in Venezuela and outside Venezuela that don't trust the central party. So this is problematic. This generates a conflict. But you, can, you may tell me, okay, this is Venezuela. It's a developing country. But Think in US, the last elections. The last elections, there were 50% of the people that didn't trust the central authority. Okay? And here is where comes blockchains. Blockchains, actually, what it allows is to remove this need of a trusted central party. Okay? With a uh, with blockchains, we can create rules, we can create things that are verifiable in a mathematical way. We don't need these big buildings, people dressed with a very special way just to give trust, people with chairs upper than the others just to give trust. A lot of tricks have been doing in the history of humanity just to, to represent trust. Some of them very expensive. Okay, blockchain, the value, one of the big values of, of the blockchain is that we don't need this trusted central party. We don't, we don't need, we can remove, we don't need to pay this trusted central party. It's more efficient in, in that way. Okay, 
what are those ru these rules that we can define? Here, I want to I want to do a small parenthesis to explain an example. An example, of, for example, how would work a liquid democracy system? This is a, 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 possi a possibility that can be done and can be defined in blockchain. What's liquid democracy? Liquid de well, in the current in the, currently, we delegate or vote once every four years. We give or vote to somebody. Most of the times, we don't even know this person who is. It's somebody some, with some political party in most of the countries. And during four years, they can do whatever they want. You cannot do anything else. And after four years, maybe you can decide to delegate this vote to, some, to one or to the other. Liquid democracy system is a continuous system. There is no elections every four years. It's a system where you can select at any moment who is your delegate, who is your representative. And this can be anybody. It can be maybe your father. It can be your teacher. It can be a known person that you trust, that you believe that's, uh, that's going to be doing good for your community. And of course, this person maybe delegates to another person. And this generates a chain where finally there are people that somehow uh, vote. But you're, you are responsible. Your main responsible is at least, at least to select who is your right delegate, how you want to, um, to use your quota of power. This is at least your responsibility. Of course, if you want your, your quota of power, if you want your token of power, it's yours. And you can, um, for example, uh, if you want to vote, in, uh, if you want to participate in all the decisions, you have the right to do. Actually, for example, how would a, a voting in a liquid democracy work? Well, it's a normal voting system, but there are like two limit dates. One we, where the delegates is the limit, the limit date for the delegates to vote. And then there is a period where you can check how the delegate that represents you use your vote and you have the right or even the responsibility to change that vote if you think that this is not valid. Because at the end, the vote is yours. The responsibility is yours. And this should work in a continuous, in a continuous system. Of course, this has some, um, some, oh, sorry. There, you can, uh, you can delegate, for example, you can do, you can, this, this can be complicated a little bit. For example, I can delegate, uh, for example, um, um, healthy issues to a person, environmental, environmental, environmental uh, issues to maybe another person that's more specific for that, health issues to somebody else, uh, education to somebody else. So you can delegate by, if you want, by category, or even uh, you can do things like, sorry. You can do things, for example, uh, delegating, for example, 50% of your power to your father and 50% of your power maybe to your teacher. So you can, you can do these things. You, somehow you administer your quota of power the way you think is better for the community. Okay, those, this is how, what's liquid democracy about. And I think this is much better and this is possible uh, uh, because of this uh, blockchain technology. Okay, but okay, but we have a problem is that blockchains do not scale at this point. Well, actually blockchains can scale. And this is where we are working. Right now, this is possible because a technology that has been invented in the last decade, this is known as a zero knowledge technology or is known also as a comp uh, verifiable computation. Uh, this is a very new technology. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a technology that is just out of the oven right now, but at this possible, we are in this engineering process where we are building these uh, uh, blockchains that will be possible to generate uh, many transactions uh, per second with smart contracts and with all the, all, all we know. So all the, all, all the properties that we have with the current blockchains, but at bigger scale, cheaper transactions and faster. Okay, this is, actually, this is what I'm, fully focused right now in a project that's called the KVM in Polygon Hermes. Okay, but this is not the only infrastructure that we need. Okay, this is, this is 
one of the layers is the blockchain, if you want the, the engine of the decentralization systems. Okay, but there are other things that are also as important as that and we need to develop. The first layer would be the decentralized networks. The centralized networks are, for example, peer-to-peer -peer networks. Right now, we are very centralized to ISPs and uh, if you see how the, the, the hardware, the communication systems, it's now it's quite centralized. The second layer would be the infrastructure level. Right now, if, you, if, we, if we see how we are using the, the digital era, most of the, so most of the infrastructure, most of the service infrastructure is, ru is running in four or five big data centers, AWS, Azure, and uh, Google, and not much more than that. Okay? This is very concentrated power and very dangerous. So we need to decentralize also the hardware. Okay? Um, of course, we talk about blockchains. Blockchains needs to scale. This is important for this to happen. But if we see on top of that, of course, we have identity. Okay, all the all the digital systems, you need to log in. You need to say who you are. You need to talk. You need to do things about identity. So identity is very important. Here is item three that's working in self sovereign identity is one of the projects that's important about. The other layer is about tokenization. When the, here is tokenizing the economy. At the end, is putting a representation of the economy in the blockchains, in the digital. So this digitalizing the economy somehow. Okay, here is where the tokens, NFTs is happening, and uh, it's also very much about defining, for example, all the token economics, defining the rules in order to generate the right incentives so that the society can work. A lot of work to do there in that direction. And of course, on top of that, there is uh, governance. Governance, including voting systems and so on. Here on the right, I just made the selection of projects. It's just a random selection. It's, uh, it's my selection, just projects that I love. These are having contributing somehow. And these are just uh, some examples, but there are others. And there are many projects in the world that are working in those directions, okay? But let's go further. This is just the infrastructure layer. Okay. Of course, on top of this infrastructure layer, we need to build also applications. Applications, I explain a little bit about liquid democracy, but we can talk, for example, about UBI, universal basic income, but you know, um, tracking systems, we uh, transparency systems. There are a lot of applications that needs to be built on top of this infrastructure. And all that because this is, should be served to a community. I want to see a world that's community-based world where the people select which communities wants to be in, which communities wants to collaborate, which communities they think they can contribute, they can work on. Community can be a company, can be a family, can be a country, can be a, 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 just a, a, a NGO, a theater group, it can be anything. So every time that people just get together to do a common thing, this is a community. And these communities needs to organize themselves. They need to, to, and here is where blockchain can help a lot. And on top, I don't want to forget that at the end, communities need to work for individuals, need to work for, for persons. And this is very much the thing. Blockchain will transform the world. Of course, blockchain is just a single technology. It's just a trigger. This technology will transform the world if it goes together with a social with a social transformation. This is, and the social transformation comes more in thinking how, so how, can, how can we add value to the communities we are? It's this matter of response of taking responsibility moving forward. So I want to invite to all of you to be part of this revolution. And what I'm saying this is just See how, what can you add to the, to, to, to the co communities you belong? Which communities do you think that you can add value? What are your skills that you think that you can uh, add value to uh, improve the society uh, better? And this is, this technology bring us this opportunity to in some whole redo the world, just trying to fix the things that are not working well. States, they were created in the 17th, in the 17th century. I think it's the time to, uh, start thinking in a different way where that humans can uh, 
uh, the different way where humans, uh, the different way of organizing uh, humanity. And this is just a matter of ourself, of humans. All humans are equal, or humans are individual that cannot value to this community. And that's my talk. Thank you very much.